So a viewer from, uh, we're, as long as you're on the education topic, a viewer from Rush City wants to talk about, well, we have a budget surplus. How about more money for special education as well as for support staff like psychologists, counselors, and social workers? So let's, uh, let's start with you, um, uh, Representative Verdahl. What's your thought on that question? Well, uh, first of all, unfortunately, our surplus isn't uh, of the size that, that we could do that this year. Uh, I think that there are going to be some other priorities. When we go into a budget year, which is again next year, uh, I think there are areas like that we need to take a serious look at. Uh, we are, I believe, 50th in you know, per student counselor ratio in the nation. And especially with the uh, uh, advent of, of some of the, the school violence and, and the situations we've been facing, I, I think that uh, you know, there is a uh, an increased role for more counselors in our schools. Uh, you know, certainly funding for education uh, is a very important thing for the state of Minnesota. It is the number one item in our state budget. And uh, when we come into a, a budget year next year, I'm sure it will be a, a very uh, high priority again. Senator? So the, the governor did just uh, release his uh, supplemental budget. This isn't a, a, a budget year per se, um, but uh, every we set the budget at the beginning of the of the biennium, which was last year for the coming two year cycle. But we did come into uh, this session with a three hundred some million dollar surplus. Um, you know, and and uh, you know much of the surplus occurs on a one time basis, so it's hard to um, budget for things that have ongoing uh, obligations. We call those tails. Um, but he did come out with a supplemental budget using some of those dollars, put most of those dollars on the bottom line, about one hundred twenty million dollars on the bottom line. Just reserve it for. Um, our credit rating or some future need, um, uh, but a uh, hundred and some million of that he um, did uh, designate for other purposes, some tax relief, uh, a big portion of that, seventy some million dollars for education, K twelve education, and a good a good portion of that for what he's calling safe schools initiative. So for counselors, other kinds of support staff, school psychologists, social social workers, and I think about half of that. Uh, 30 some million bucks for additional dollars for special ed, which is really, really important. It's a huge impact. Minneapolis Public Schools is facing a $33 million deficit. It's about five point something percent of their overall budget. And all of that can be attributed to um, the fact that Minneapolis Public Schools has to pick up special ed through on the basic per pupil formula or on its own property tax. Can't go to the reserves anymore. There are no reserves left. You know, they can do a, a number of other things as well, um, you know, get rid of some of the central office bureaucracy and the like. But uh, Minneapolis Public Schools spends about $118 million on special ed, and uh, 85 of that comes from those non-special ed sources. And we have a, a, a promise that has never been kept to, to pick up most of special ed costs through federal contributions and state 40 percent. Yeah, through the feds and 30 percent through, through uh, <clears throat> state contributions. And I think we're at 18 percent. Um, uh, supporting special ed purposes, and so it's a it's a big deal. So a little bit of money, we're grateful for, but we need to have a completely different conversation about special ed funding. And in the house, we, we have been talking about that, mm -hmm. and you know, certainly the cross subsidy, the fact that our school districts are having to pay so much more uh, for it is a, is a big concern. Uh, and all of the things you we're talking about are important, but it, it comes down to you know, what are the priorities uh, again in in the great scheme of things. 300 million isn't that much money, and you know we're talking about tax conformity and how all of this matches up, and so uh, you know it's going to come down to that. You know, what are the priorities? What can we do with the money we have? Well, this is a full budget year discussion, so 2019 would be the appropriate place. However, this is also an election year, and we are electing a governor, so where the house is up and a governor. This would be the type of thing that a governor should take on his initiatives and say it's going to be in his budget and this is going to be part of what's going to be dealt with in 2019. For Greater Minnesota, these are real issues. We desperately need to have counselors. And when you're talking about special ed, what, our school districts are stressed to the max. And when you have to assign one-to-one -one ratios, it really strips our staff from other places that they could also be useful. So I would encourage the uh, caller to say, make sure you pick the governor that's going to do this, 2019. Well, the Senate Republican Caucus, uh, the majority, we had made at the very beginning of session, we made two priorities. And they were 1 and 1A, one and they both went back and forth. One was school safety. Two was tax conformity. For school safety, 
uh, we are going to be coming out with a plan that deals that deals with this in two different ways. Um, of course, it's all in the air. I, I will give credit to Senator Pratt and Senator Nelson for taking the leads on these. Um, one is to increase the, the safe schools levy at the, at the local level so that the locals, if they need it, the school board can increase the safe school levy at their discretion. And that levy goes to exactly w uh, many of the issues that the caller has brought in. Uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, physical plant security, um, even rooms or e or facilities for the mental health providers. So it does not only solve what he, this caller is talking about, but also helps with the school safety issue that we have. The other other component is some one-time cash based on per, pu per, pu per pupil unit. And I'm not on edu any education committee, so I sort of tried to understand everything that happens here, but I think a one-time cash infusion, again, to provide school districts um, additional funding to be able to provide safe schools is something that we as a caucus, uh, as a majority, believe in. We don't believe in going in other directions other than school safety, and if we're going to focus on it, that's what we need to spend the money on.